to continue, uh, we looked at this and said uh, the record shows that there have been large changes and I want to point out that since about the last 50 million years we are kind of in this cooling trend and there is also a drop in the CO2 which means the carbon dioxide that uh, is increasing in the atmosphere now that we are worried about actually was much higher in the past as well. For melting the Arctic ice and glaciers on Greenland and Antarctica, obviously you need the greenhouse effect, which we will look at again. Uh, and that means CO2 was probably higher unless some other greenhouse gas could do it. But it turns out it's the CO2 anyways. So global warming is happening on top of this slow war cooling that has been happening over the last 50 to 55 million years. Okay, so let's zoom into this uh, last couple of uh, few million years ago uh, and look at this uh, uh, equivalent temperature change again with respect to a baseline. So you can see here that again we show the benthic delta O18 which I will explain in a little bit. It's just a measure of change in glacier volume or ocean temperature. Okay, we'll see how that works. So, going back to about five and a half million years ago, uh, you can see that the temperatures were warmer than the current base period, and the temperature was varying at a certain time scale, which turns out to be uh, 41,000 years, which we will see where that comes from. Basically it's the time scale of change of Earth's obliquity. Remember Earth is tilted to the plane of the ecliptic at 23 and a half degrees at the present but as we said before it changes from 22 and a half to 24 and a half and that happens on 41,000 year time scales. Okay? So that slowly shifts to a 100,000 year time scale. Okay? this time scale is actually a little bit mixed but much more clear here in the last uh, three millions to about two million years ago the 41 kilo year cycle 41,000 year cycle is much more obvious and then it switched to this hundred thousand year cycle okay so the ice ages and uh, deglacial ages or non ice ages happened on hundred thousand year time scales okay so 100,000 year time scale comes from changes in the ellipticity of the orbit as we will see again but that turns out to be not a big change in the energy received remember if you mo change the orbital shape from more circular to more elliptic or more elliptic to more circular you're moving closer to and away from the Sun so the amount of energy being received changes that change is tiny because the circularity or ellipticity only changes by percent it's very small okay so then what does it mean that means there are other feedbacks in the system and there is one very critical feedback that we'll learn about and we'll look at many other feedbacks in the system so small changes can amplify in the system small energy received changes changes small changes in the amount of energy received at the top of the atmosphere can amplify within the Earth system because of these internal feedbacks. Okay? Nonetheless, uh, you can see that climate changes but it also changes at different time scales and if we go back before about 12,000 years ago we can safely assume that it was all because of natural changes, natural orbital changes and na internal feedbacks. Ocean stores energy, releases, glaciers build up, glaciers melt and so on. Right? So that's something to remember. So we will learn about feedbacks. What do we mean by feedbacks? You have an intuitive sense but can we define it more formally? And we'll see that actually we can. And we'll also learn that positive feedbacks can generate runaway situations very simply in on Venus there is a runaway warming so the surface temperature has reached 460 degrees centigrade on Mars there is a runaway cooling happening that took it to minus 50 degrees centigrade on the surface whereas Earth has a more moderate feedback that is neither runaway warming nor runaway cooling so it has remained at about 15 degrees centigrade with some changes that we saw. 
So the question then is, can global warming caused by S put us into a global warming runaway effect or a global cooling runaway effect? Some of you probably seen a movie called Day After Tomorrow. I'll mention it a little bit again later on, but that kind of m movie was uh, not entirely unrealistic. Time scales were very fast, but nonetheless, those kinds of feedbacks uh, are possible in the system. So we need to know what happens if we keep kicking the system. Do we know everything that can it can do? Will we freeze to death or will we get so hot that we will die? That's the question with global warming, right? We are kicking the system very hard by increasing greenhouse gases, but we don't know necessarily what are all the consequences. So we will try to learn a little bit about what the potential consequences are and how sensitive our climate really is to these changes in greenhouse gases.